Protein Synthesis A protein is a biological molecule that consists mainly of four elements hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. Proteins are found within cells and generally everywhere within the body and their main role is to ensure the normal functioning of the organism. Now proteins can be generally classified into three categories. Enzymes, for example pepsin. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions. Hormones, such as insulin, which are chemical messengers that travel in the blood. And structural proteins, such as collagen. This is found in connective tissue, such as bones and skin. Now a protein can be considered to be a polymer, which means a chain of repeating units, or monomers, that are chemically bonded together. In the case of proteins, the monomers are called amino acids. So in other words, we can say that a protein is a chain of amino acids that are chemically bonded. Now amino acids are the building blocks to make proteins. However, in the body there are 20 different types of amino acids, yet there are hundreds and thousands of different proteins. So how is it that 20 different unique amino acids can create so many different variations of proteins? The answer is in how they are arranged. For example, we could use different amino acids in a different arrangement to create different proteins. So let's look at how proteins are made by looking at protein synthesis. Proteins are made within cells. Amino acids are combined together in a special cellular machine called the ribosome. And this creates our protein. So it looks quite easy. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. So we can think of the cell as a protein making factory. The process of protein synthesis starts off in the nucleus. Here we have a molecule called DNA. DNA contains the instructions or the blueprints to make all the possible proteins in the body. Conveniently, each protein has its own section within the DNA called a gene. So a gene is simply a section of a DNA that creates a different protein. Let's say we want to make this protein. The first stage is to get the information out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm, where the ribosome can use that information to combine amino acids and create our protein. However, we have a big problem. Literally. The DNA is too large to leave the nucleus. So, what we're going to do is take the gene and simply make a copy of it. This copy is called mRNA, and the M stands for messenger. So now we've just copied that part of the DNA. So we have enough information just to make that one protein. And all the other information is ignored. This process is called transcription. Now, this mRNA molecule will leave the nucleus through one of the nuclear pores, which is a hole on the surface of the nucleus. Okay, so transcription is complete. Let's move on to the second stage. This is going to involve the help of a ribosome. So, the mRNA molecule sits on the ribosome and amino acids are getting ready to be joined together. Now we need something to carry the amino acids to the site of assembly. And this is where these little guys come to help us. tRNA, and the T stands for transfer. So the way it's going to work is the following. Three bases on the mRNA, also known as a codon, or a triplet code, will match up with the three bases on the tRNA also known as an anticodon. So, the ribosome begins to read the mRNA, three bases at a time. After reading it, it will bring down the amino acid which has a complementary tRNA molecule, so one that matches with the three bases that are read on the mRNA. In this case, 
This guy is the one that was complimentary. Okay, then it's going to read another three bases. And once again, it's going to bring down another tRNA molecule, which has a complementary anticodon. So in this case, it was this guy. Now the amino acids can join together. Moving forward, the tRNA molecule is no longer required, so it's going to leave and find another amino acid. The ribosome keeps moving forward, reading three bases at a time until it gets to the end of the mRNA. Once again, another tRNA molecule is brought down and the amino acids are joined together. The second part of this process is called translation. So, a sequence of bases on the mRNA have now been translated into a sequence of amino acids. So now we have a chain of amino acids, also known as a protein, and we've completed protein synthesis. From here on, the protein can either stay within the cell, or for example, if it's a hormone, it will leave the cell. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.